put in the chat box and let me know if you can see my screen. I want to make sure that everything is good to go. Okay, perfect. Booty community. Hey, Devon. Awesome. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Today, we are talking about how to create a profitable social media strategy, right? So I feel like a lot of people talk about social media and lots of tips and tricks and what's going on and the newest tools and all that good stuff. But none of that matters if you're not making money, because at the end of the day, as business owners, that is what we are looking to do. We're looking to make money, make impact, and to ultimately live in our purpose, which is usually tied to um, giving back and serving others. So today we're going to break that down and I'm going to teach you exactly how I help my clients to make money on social media and exactly how I have been able to build a uh, business on online for the past four years um, with social media solely. So let's jump into it. So a little bit about me. My name is Tyler Jackson and I am a social media strategist and a coach to social media managers. Um, I started my agency back in 2016 after I had worked in the corporate world for a little bit. And, you know, uh, it just wasn't really what I was looking for working in corporate. I There were a lot of limitations, a lot of politics. I had really given my all to the company that I was working with after college. And when I was ready to grow and go to the next level, they weren't really supportive of it. So I was like, you know, I'm going to take my talents and I'm going to relocate to Atlanta. I'm from Alabama originally, and I was living in Nashville. Um, so I decided to relocate from Nashville to Atlanta to start my own agency. Um, I will say working for corporate really opened my eyes to businesses and their need for social media, right? And it was the best decision I've ever made because honestly, you guys, we are not even, we have not even reached the peak of this digital era that we are in. Um, and I know that 2020 has been all over the place with the pandemic. Um, but one thing that it has shown us is the power of social media, the power of digital marketing. So many companies are changing their structure and what they do to accommodate this new era that we're going in. So if you have, if you're a business owner, um, or you have a personal brand and you're ready to take off, this is the best time. There's no better time to do this. Um, so I just love everything about this era. Like I said, we haven't even reached the peak of it. Um, a little bit more about what I do. I specialize in working directly with entrepreneurs, brands, corporate companies, and marketing teams to reach objectives for these businesses. Um, I don't work with a particular niche or anything like that. As long as a company or brand has all the assets that we need to be successful, we can take it to the next level and help them to reach their goals. So today, during this session, I'm going to be telling you about the assets that you need to be successful and to make an impact and to build revenue online. So the first thing I want you to do, I want you to comment your business um, or your business that you want to start. If you're a personal brand, tell me exactly what it is, what service you offer. Um, and then comment and tell me your number one struggle with social media. I want to hear it. I have heard a little bit of everything, but I want to know exactly, you know, what you are struggling with. And at the end of the session, I want to open up the floor for some Q&A so you can ask me questions directly about your social media strategy um, and things like that. So definitely comment. I want to check out your business and we can network in the comments below. So if there's a business um, that you see that you're interested in, definitely follow them on social media. Um, support each other. Let's network while we're while we're doing this session. Okay, so the top three mistakes I see on social media is number one, not being consistent. Um, so posting sporadically, posting um, a couple times a week. Um, you know, when you're not consistent, everyone can tell and. Um, also, it's really hard to build trust when you're not consistent on social media. 
Um, when you are running a business, you need to treat it like a business and not a hobby. So businesses, they're going to post every single day, if not multiple times a day. And just to see growth, you're going to need to be consistent. So that's the number one issue that I see. Um, number two is going to be not providing value. So um, the biggest thing to entrepreneurship is we are a solution to someone's problem and we're ultimately serving our customers, right? We're serving everyone that comes through our doors, everyone that um, connects with us, we're serving them. So we need to be providing lots and lots of value. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more as we go deeper into the session. And then number three, no clear offer or solution. Like I said, um, our jobs as entrepreneurs is to provide a solution to people's problems. A lot of people do not have clarity on exactly what their offer is. And I know that's kind of surprising, but I talk to a lot of people and it's like we're trying to figure out where we are actually driving traffic to. Um, it has to make sense. We want to make sure that all of this hard work that we're doing um, has a very clear objective and a very measurable objective so we can make sure that we're hitting our bottom line um, and making money. So comment and tell me again, I want to make this very interactive. So tell me if you struggle with one, two, or three, which one do you struggle with the most? I'm going to go back to the slide. Um, do you struggle with consistency, not providing value, or you're not clear on your offer or the solution that you provide, or maybe it is all three? Let me know. And I'm just going to jump back over here so I can check out the chat. Definitely number one, consistency. We have some ones and number threes. Um, work with accounts and hospitality. Lack of content. Yep. Watching a video series. YouTube and IGTV. Okay. Lots of content creators. I love it. Okay, we have some people from Alabama. I'm from Decatur, so near Huntsville. We have some people in Atlanta. I love it. I love it. Okay, just going to jump back over. So we have some ones, some threes. Didn't see too many twos. Um, so we're going to break this down a little bit further. So when creating a profitable social media strategy, here are your first three steps. Number one, identify who your audience is and what their pain points are. So let's say, um, let's just use me as an example. <laughs> I run a social media agency and the biggest issue that most of my clients have is time, right? They do not have time to manage their own social media. They're busy running their businesses, building teams, doing lots of different things that, you know, CEOs do. So to outsource their social media takes a huge weight off of their shoulders and they pass it along to me. So when I'm creating content, I'm always acknowledging that that pain point of time, that pain point of operating in your zone of genius so you're not doing things all over the place, right? Um, let's say that you are a uh, hair care brand, right? And your clients or your potential customers' biggest pain point is their hair won't grow past a certain length. Um, those are all things that you need to know so that you can create content that is going to speak to your audience's pain point. A lot of people really aren't clear on exactly who their audience is and how they serve them. So my homework for you to do is to write down five pain points that your current audience is experiencing and your solution to that problem. Which brings me to number two, um, what is the solution you offer, right? Um, so the solution to my for my potential clients are, you know, we take, we create all the content for you. Um, you never have to log into your account. We do all the account management for you. 
everything's done so you can focus on your zone of genius. Um, and in regards to like the hair care company, your solution would be, you know, if you use this product three times a day for 30 days, you're going to see results. Your hair is going to grow longer um, and it's going to change your life, right? Let's say that you are a life coach um, and people's pain points are that they can't seem to get past a certain glass ceiling in their life with relationships um, and they're trying to get to the next level. So the solution that you provide is breaking through the mindset um, and breaking through the trauma that might cause people to not be able to have healthy relationships. So um, identify the five up to five pain points that your audience is currently facing and then the solution that you offer, the transformation that you offer. Um, and then number three, where are you driving traffic? So I know earlier I said that a lot of people, when we are working together, we're not driving traffic to a specific offer. I believe that every single person, every single business owner should have a lead magnet. And a lead magnet, if you aren't familiar with what it is, it is just an incentive to get someone to join your email list. So a lead magnet could be a free ebook, it could be a guide, it could be a case study, um, it could be a free webinar if you wanna do it that way. If you are a product-based company, it could be free shipping coupon, it could be a discounted coupon, it could be a coupon code, um, it could be a quiz, different things like that. But you need something that is capturing those emails because Social media, it changes all the time and it doesn't belong to us, right? If Instagram wanted to shut down tomorrow, we would just all be out of luck. You would lose all of your followers. But if you're driving people to an email list, then you're always going to own those emails and have be able to correspond with those people. Um, and now not only are you building your email list, but now you have a list full of Warm, warm leads and people who have shown interest in what it is that you have to offer. So everyone should have a lead magnet. If you don't have a lead magnet, um, jot it down and think about what you can create as a lead magnet right now because you need to be driving traffic somewhere. And that's just, you know, your basic step. So with my clients, we're always driving traffic to their lead magnets to build their lists because people are also more likely to buy from email than they are from like your social media. Um, also, text message, text message marketing is also really, really huge right now. So if you can also capture their phone number, you can really build a really strong community. So that's one place you should definitely be driving traffic to on social media. And then you want to drive traffic to your actual offer. So what is it that you're selling? Where are you driving people in regards to that? So um, if you're a product-based business, obviously you want to drive traffic to your website um, and make that very clear that, you know, when they get on your website, you want to make it really clear that they're in the right space. Um, if you're a service-based provider like me, you might want to drive people to a um link to schedule a call with you. So I don't drive people to my website because it's just going to confuse them. They're gonna, not going to know what's going on. But if they go to my Acuity link, they can see all of my services, see what I offer, and they can book a call with me really easy. So um, I'm always driving traffic for my clients and myself to either a opt-in and an elite magnet to build the email list or to a specific offer. Um, and it depends on what you're promoting, obviously. So let's talk about creating content because this is where a lot of people struggle. Um, I know a lot of people said that they are not consistent with their social media. And this is probably why, because a lot of people overthink the creating content piece of it. So um, the point of creating content are these three main things. You want to, one, increase your engagement. People buy from people that they know, like, and trust, right? So you want to make sure that people are commenting on your on your content. They are sharing your content. They are saving your content. Um, those saves and shares are so important because the more people are saving, the more people are sharing, the more brand awareness you're getting, and the more you are growing. So every single piece of content you could, should you create should be shareable or savable. Those are the two um, really important metrics to me. I'm not really big on likes. Um, I think comments are really important, but 
people really overlook their saves and their shares. And this goes across any social media platform that we could discuss, um, you know, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, whatever the case may be. If people are saving your content, that means that it resonated with them and they want to come back with it, back to it. So when you're looking at your engagement and you're looking at your analytics, look at all of those different aspects. Um, number two, when you are creating content, it should add value and educate. Um, once again, people buy from people that they know, like, and trust. So in this space, you really have to establish yourself as the expert for whatever it is people are looking for. If you are selling um, beard hair care, you need to establish yourself as the number one, the best beard hair care products on the market. You have the best ingredients. Um, so many people love it. It's creating so many transformations for people. And you want to educate, like, these are the ingredients that are inside of it. They are good for you because X, Y, and Z, um, all those different things. If you're a service-based provider, you want to establish yourself, yourself as an expert by providing a lot of tips, a lot of education on the tools that you're using, on the transformations that you provide. Um, I read a really great book when I started my social media career called Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk. And it's basically talking about giving, 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 and then asking for the sale. You want to give so much value that people just really trust you. And when you ask for a sale or when you try to sell something, they want to buy from you because you've already provided so much free value. Um, so my rule of thumb for all of my clients is 80% engagement and 20% selling when it comes to social media. You want to make sure that you are giving lots of value and then asking for the sale because if you're constantly trying to sell, people are going to just not even pay attention to your content anymore. Like psychologically, if we see the same commercial over and over we're, or we hear the same commercial, or we hear the same radio whatever, then we're going to tune it out because it's like a broken record at this point. Like we've seen it before, whatever. But if you're constantly adding value and creating content that people can learn from and they can actually utilize, then they're going to trust you a lot more and they are going to be ready to buy anything that you put out. So this applies for service-based and product-based um, businesses. And lastly, your content needs to evoke emotion, right? Every single post that you create should have an objective to what you want your potential client or customer to feel. Do you want them to laugh? Do you want them to feel inspired? Do you want them to feel educated um, after the fact? Because evoking emotion is what is going to get people to share your content. Um, it's going to make you relatable and it's going to help to resonate with people. So once again, it establishes you as an expert. So really think about how you want your, your potential customer or client to feel. I see a lot of people and they're creating copy or captions on Instagram that are just like, kind of just thrown together. They're just, you know, saying anything. And you really want to take the time to craft copy in captions that are going to catch people's attention and to really teach them a lot and to um, get them to interact with you. So I do have a copy formula and it's typically, you know, you want to have a really strong opening line, um, a really strong, that's going to catch people's attention, something, you know, borderline clickbaity. Um, and then you always want to have a call to action at the end of your copy. So ask people a question. You can ask them, you know, does this resonate with you? Um, have you ever been in this situation? Tag a friend that you think would enjoy this product. Share with your friends and family if you think this is something that could benefit you. Um, always have a call to action to, once again, increase engagement because when you have a lot of comments on your content and it's um, getting a lot of great engagement, that is going to rank you higher in the algorithm. And that's how all the algorithm works, right? Every single platform, the algorithm works by creating more engagement on your content because the, these platforms want people to stay on their platforms. They don't want people to jump on and off. They want to get people to stay on. So if your content is performing well, you're going to rank higher in the algorithm um, and it's going to be more be beneficial for you. So um, always have a call to action on all of your posts so that you are connecting with your audience and boosting engagement. So 
Next, I want to talk about content pillars because once again, a lot of people struggle with um, consistency and we talked about the type of content you need. So now we're going to talk about the different content pillars because so many people come to me and they say, I don't know what to post or I'm running out of ideas to post. And I want you to know that you're probably overthinking it. Um, when it comes to social media, we do not have to reinvent the wheel. Um, we really just need to make sure that we have clear objectives and clear content pillars. So here are just some examples of content pillars based on whatever um, business you have. So let's say you are a product-based business. You need product shots, and I highly recommend professional product shots. So this is an investment in your business that I think is very important because when you're selling a product, you are selling a lifestyle. People are going to look at the aesthetics. You want people to want to have it in their homes, right? Or they want to buy it, they want to wear it, they want to use it. These need to be really, really good. So I would suggest working with a photographer at least once a quarter to make sure you have really strong product shots. Product education. Um, you want to tell people what is inside of the product, educate people on the ingredients, educate people on the texture of the product so they can see how it feels. Um, Educate if it's, you know, not uh, if it's packaged, you want to show them what the package looks like um, when they receive it, how it's going to look, how it feels, all that good stuff. Um, you also want to make sure that you're sharing behind the scenes. So maybe what it looks like building the product or your your process for the product, um, maybe some behind the scenes of you uh, working with customers or whatever the case may be, just behind the scenes. People really love to connect with people on a deeper level, and that is going to add a more relatable touch to it. Um, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So including those behind the scenes and brand storytelling is super important. So if you are a product-based business, you want to tell people why you started this business. What is the story behind it? Because a lot of people are going to be connect, be able to connect with that story. Um, one of my clients, she is a natural hair care brand and she started her business like three years ago in her kitchen because she had a daughter and she did not want to use products with a ton of chemicals and things on her daughter. So she created her own brand. So many people can relate with that story, right? Um, I heard, I spoke with someone in Clubhouse the other day and she was saying she created a natural skincare um, line because her children had eczema and she didn't want to inject them with like steroids and things like that to cure it. So she created her own products. And there's a ton of people who can also relate to that. So brand storytelling is so important and humanizes your brand and it makes people want to connect with you. If you love a brand, I'm pretty sure you know the story behind it. Let's talk about like Apple products, for example, everybody knows Steve Jobs' story and who he is and how the brand got started. Um, Jeff Bezos, people know his brand story. Um, so think about like what it is that humanizes you and how you can, can, can connect with your audience. Um, always be willing to like show your face, show your family, um, whatever the case may be, just things that are going to tie into your brand and help to connect with people. Um, engagement posts are really important. So these can be quotes, memes, tweets, things like that. When I am creating engagement posts, I'm also looking and seeing like what is popular within my industry, what is performing well on social media for other people, what people's audiences are um, resonating with. And then I find innovative ways to make that a part of our own brand or whatever it is that we're doing for the client. Product-based content pillar, also you need reviews. So um, you want to show that people actually like using your product. This is called social proof. Um, if you're in sales, you've probably heard of like the Jones effect, right? People want to buy things that they see other people buying. So if you have reviews on there, it number one makes you credible, but number two, it activates that Jones effect that makes other people want to be in on whatever it is that you're doing and whatever it is that you have. People also have a big fear of missing out, FOMO. Um, so by sharing reviews, it's going to make people be like, you know, oh, this is pretty cool. I'm going to try this out. Like this actually works. 
Um, so that's a great way to get social proof. And then, of course, you're going to make sure that you're selling, you're sharing your freebie or your lead magnet at least once a week, um, up to three times a week if you can. But you want to also make always make sure that you're driving traffic to that in some way, shape or form so that you're building your email list and ultimately building your business to make more sales in the future. Um, if you are a service based entrepreneur, some content pillars that you can use are educational content. So educating on exactly what it is that you do, because a lot of the time we we know what we do. So, you know, if it's for me, I know, for example, like I'm running social media day in, day out. So there's a little things that I do not even consider to share with people because I'm just so used to doing it. But think, just take a day and bring up all the things that you do that could help other people, right? The tools that you use, the processes that you use, um, why you do what you do, why it's important, all of those things. Um, service versus provider, you also need to be sharing your story. So like I said, this is gonna build the know, like, and trust factor. Why, did you, why do you do what you do? How did you get started? All of those things are very important um, when it comes to interacting with people and building real community like real community that supports you. If you think about, you know, your favorite entrepreneurs online, I'm pretty sure you've connected with them based off of their story and their relatability. So that's always something to keep in mind. Testimonials, once again, this is social proof. It's going to show the transformations that you provide for other people and people are going to be more opt to work with you. Um, promo, so anything that you're promoting, if you're driving traffic to an offer, a webinar, a a a um <laughs> a conference like this online conference you want to make sure that you're sharing that like i said you want to keep the 80 20 rule so you don't want to be shoving it down people's throat but at least showing up um two or three times a week promoting certain things um also engagement posts so again quotes memes tweets you want to make sure you're sharing your freebies behind the scene and I put freebies twice, so ignore that. Um, I'm gonna give you an example of my content pillars going into 2021 because honestly, I don't spend a ton of time on my social media currently because my clients are the priority. Uh, but going into 2021, my content pillars are going to be entrepreneurship, motivational content, fashion content because I love fashion and clothes and all that good stuff, um, health and wellness, and then of course, social media. So those are my five. If you haven't already, some more homework for you, write down four to five content pillars for your social media, and then write down four to five topics to discuss within each of those content pillars. Make sense? Okay, so once you have your content pillars ready and your topics that you're gonna talk about, you have your product shots. Um, I didn't touch on this, but I meant to, if you are a service-based provider, you need to make sure that you have fresh images of you. Um, again, I recommend getting content at least once a quarter. Um, you don't have to go to a professional. If you can, obviously do that, definitely. But honestly, I take a lot of pictures myself with my ring light or I get my friends to take pictures of me with my iPhone. Um, but you want to keep fresh images on your social media because people, like I said, they will just drown out. Um, if they've seen it before, we're not going to pay attention to it. So you always want to have that like wow factor. Like this is a new, never seen, never before seen image and people are going to want to engage with it and see what you have to say. So keep your content fresh as possible when it comes to um, social media. So when creating a strategy, and this applies for any platform, the number one thing you're going to do is decide on a posting frequency. So a lot of people ask like how often they should be posting, and it varies based on like your business and your objectives and your goals. So I like my just a standard kind of strategy, what I do with my clients is one to two posts per day. That's Monday through Sunday. Um, on their feeds. And if we're using Instagram or Facebook, we're going to post at least four times in their stories. Um, but you can really post up to four to 10 times in your stories a day. 
um, to get interaction. Uh, now, you don't have to post that often if you don't have to, if you don't have the means to, or you just don't have the content, or you know, you don't feel like you need to post that often. Um, but look at your analytics and find out like when people are interacting with you the most and what content that they're interacting with. I know for my personal page, I don't post daily. Um, I'm going to be launching something new this week, so I will be going. Um, I will be going live all day, all, every day next week. I'll be posting every day next week. I'm going to post today and it'll pop, probably be for the next couple of weeks because I'm actually, I'm launching something, but I'm very strategic about my social media. If I'm not launching something in particular, or if I'm not promoting something in particular, I don't spend a lot of time on there because my time can be spent doing other things. Um, if you're product based, you absolutely need to be posting every day. Um, but like I said, this is up to your discretion. If you want just a solid social media strategy, at least once per day will work. Um, YouTube is a little bit different. I know someone mentioned YouTube earlier, um, at least once a week. You can do two to three times a week if you're trying to ramp it up. Same thing kind of goes with um, the other platforms. So if you're on Instagram, and you want to grow your followers rapidly, you need to be posting at least two to three times a day, maybe even four times a day, and utilizing all of the tools that Instagram offers. So like Reels are really popular right now. If you're using Reels, they're gonna help you to rank higher in the algorithm. So make sure that you are um, utilizing all these features that these um, platforms give you so that you are working high and getting lots of engagement. Uh, I love TikTok as well. I know that I had friends who were posting once per day and they grew like 10,000 followers in a month. Um, and then I have friends who are posting two to three times a day and they are up to a million likes on TikTok. So obviously the more that you post, um, the better results or the quicker you're going to grow. But if you don't have the means to post three times a day, because honestly, that's not <laughs> that's not my favorite thing to do. It's a lot of work. It takes a ton of content. Um, if you don't have that much content, you can just stick to one to two times a day to have consistent organic growth. Um, so the second thing that you're going to do after you decide on a posting frequency is create templates for each pillar of content. So like I was mentioning, I have um, five pillars that I'm going to focus on on 2021. So I'm going to have a template for my entrepreneurship content, a template for my motivational content, for my fashion content. It would just be images of me, um, so on and so on. If you are a product-based company, you'll need a template for your reviews. You'll need a template for um, your uh, your product shots, obviously, you'll need a template for your engagement posts, whether that's quotes, memes, tweets, whatever, a template for your freebie. So create templates for each pillar of content. And what this does, it keeps everything cohesive. It, it keeps your brand aesthetically pleasing on social media. It makes you look more professional because if you're just posting random different things, it just looks um, not as professional. And these platforms are very um, kind of like perception is reality. When people see it, they're going to judge your content based off of what it looks like. I use Canva. It's a great tool to create great content. Um, but if you don't, if that's not your strong suit, definitely like outsource it to a graphic designer. Um, you can find graphic designers all over social media, but also on sites like Fiverr or Upwork. Um, and then also having creating templates for each pillar of content just makes it a lot easier when you're creating your social strategy. Um, number three, you want to make sure that you complete market research. So I touched on this earlier, but you want to look and see what other people are doing in your industry. So let's say you have a fitness line. If I had a fitness line, the first company that I would look at would be like Gymshark. What are they doing? What kind of content are they posting? Um, what are they saying? And what content is performing best um, for their audience? And then I would go from there and you want to, of course, make it innovative and make it your own. Number four, look at your analytics. Your analytics are going to tell you what your customers or potential customers are currently resonating with. Look at your shares, look at your saves, look at your comments, create more content of that. If you're getting no engagement on your content, that's just telling you that people don't like it. It's not resonating with them and that's okay. Just do more of what they do like, right? 
Um, also, you want to check your analytics to see like what's the best time to post and different things like that. Um, so <laughs> number five is completing market research. I mean, I'm sorry, competitor research. So competitor research and market research is different. And I got those switched out. I switched around. Competitor research is like looking at Gymshark and people in your, in your industry. Um, market research is talking to your potential customers and seeing what they want. So I like to do polls, questions in my stories. Um, you can put questions on your feed. You can email your audience questions and see what they want, see what they need, what they're struggling with, what their pain points are. Just really dig, dig, dig deep and ask them what it is that they want and then create content that aligns with that. Um, I think we really, really, really overthink it. But the best way to find out what your potential customer needs is just by asking them. Um, and lastly, make sure that you pre-schedule your content in a scheduling tool. Um, I love Planoly. If you're interested in Planoly, um, just shoot me a DM on Instagram at Tyler Dene. I'll send you a link. Um, but Planoly is really amazing because it is very aesthetically pleasing. You can see exactly what your feed is going to look like before it's posted. Um, you can use this for Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you don't want to use Planoly, you can just use like Facebook Creator Studio, which is free. Um, there's also tools like Later, Sprout Social, um, TweetDeck for Twitter, um, Buffer, Hootsuite, which are some older ones, um, Tailwind for Pinterest, but Planoly is my favorite. So lastly, you know, want to make sure that you don't overthink it. So many people are in their head. They're overwhelmed. You just have to put it out there and see what it does. And you won't know if it's going to work or if it isn't going to work until after you put it out there. Um, you want to make sure that you stay flexible. These platforms are always changing. We didn't have the hashtags working for like a month because of the election. I think they just got turned back on. Um, but that meant, you know, we couldn't use hashtags anymore for people to find our content. So we had to find new innovative ways to attract people. Um, and lastly, make sure that you test, test, test. Marketing is an experiment, right? You don't know what's going to work and what's not going to work until you try it out. So um, I'm going to open up the floor and see what questions you have. Um, let me just hop back over here. Okay, so I'm gonna open it up to some questions. So someone asked about the analytic tools that I use. Um, I prefer to use the analytic tools inside of Planoly, the scheduler that I was telling you about. Um, most of the schedulers that I use, I do have some type of analytics. Um, Facebook Creator Studio has their native analytics. Um, you can also use Sprout Social. They have like some of the best reports I've seen when it comes to analytics. So as long as you're using a scheduler or something like that, you can pull from that. I don't like the native um, analytics on Instagram because it it shows only a seven day view. And if you look at that every week, you're going to go crazy. I like to look at things from a 30 day view, um, unless you're a numbers person and you want to, you know, pick it apart. But I think a 30 day view just gives you a better standpoint of like what worked and what didn't work because things fluctuate on social media so much. So you just want to give yourself like a fair overview of what your content is actually doing. How does Instagram stories benefit engagement? So that's a great question, Denise. Um, we are moving into an era of what we call micro content. So if you look at TikTok, it's really popular because these videos are up to 60 seconds. So Instagram created reels to compete with TikTok. They are only 15 or 30 seconds. We are minds. We just want things quickly, right? So Instagram stories, people are more likely to look at your story than they are to look at a, a piece of content on your feed. Um, so I don't know if you ever looked at your analytics for your stories, but there's probably a lot more viewers than they are 
people who are like blocking the content on your feed um, because it's a lot easier for people to just scroll through there. So with Instagram stories, I know it makes people a ton of money because you can directly engage with people. You can ask them questions, you can do polls, you can show them behind the scenes of your life. If you follow me right now, I was sharing my breakfast on social media yesterday, what books I'm reading, like people, it really gives a more relatable touch to your content so people can connect with you on a deeper level. Um, and also if they if you have an offer or something that you're promoting you can educate people on that um, there's just so many avenues and ways that you can benefit from engagement on on your story so if you're not using that tool definitely do it um, like I said at least four to ten posts per day on Instagram you don't want to like drown them in content um, but I know that for me I've connected with a lot of people through my my stories do you think businesses will eventually shift more towards TikTok? Um, it's all subjective. You know, I feel like a lot of people try to be on every single platform and you just need to be where your audience is. So there's a lot of Gen Z on TikTok. Um, so I know a lot of music people, the music industry, they are flocking to TikTok because TikTok is creating a lot of, um, it, it gets a lot of, traction and hype off of music, off of songs. It will take a song that was made five years ago to the number one chart. So if you're in the music industry, I definitely think those businesses will be flocking more towards TikTok um, in the next year or so, um, depending on how long it's around. Um, I think it's super beneficial for all businesses because the algorithm is still so new that it, it helps you to rank really high and you can get found really easily on on um, TikTok, but it also depends on what you do. So I would do some research. I tried my hand at TikTok and my account didn't blow up the way that some of my friends' accounts blew up. So I was like, you know, I'm not going to put too much more attention into this. I'm going to shift it to what I know works, which for me is Instagram. Um, but you that's where the, the testing comes into play. But there's lots of different businesses on TikTok. It's not just dancing and music. I've seen accountants. I've seen life, life coaches. I've seen social media strategists. I've seen directors of companies. I've seen lawyers. There's a lot of opportunity over there on that platform. Hey, Jasmine. So any suggestions for making a smooth transition of an existing brand or company? Don't want to see like a drastic change when we make the switch. Don't want to make it seem like a drastic change when we make this switch in 2021. Um, so are you changing like the overall branding and aesthetic or what exactly is changing? Um, because if you want to, you can just archive the images that are already there. Um, I wouldn't delete them because Instagram doesn't want you to delete content. You can just archive it. So that it's no longer on your feed and drown out your feed with newer content. Um, TikTok's algorithm is amazing. It really is. I love TikTok's algorithm. It reminds me of like the OG YouTube algorithm where you can really learn, um, connect, like see so many different brands that's related to you based off of like what you were interacting with. Um, so my Instagram, and I'm going to share that at the end, is Tyler Dene, T-Y-L-E-R-D-E-N-A-E. -E. Um, so Jasmine said, you're changing everything, currently a clutter feed with partnerships. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I would just go ahead and archive those and start fresh. Um, archive all the images that no longer fit with your brand and start fresh. Definitely use a... Um, Definitely use a planner like Planoly that will help you to see exactly what the feed is going to look like. And you, a lot of the times we think people notice like when we rebrand or things like that, but they typically don't. So as long as you should, once you start getting consistent with your new content, then people are going to forget about like the old content. It'll just drown it out. Our brains, when it comes to social media, it's like so much content and information that's coming in daily. We really don't um home to pay attention too much of things like that do you help with pricing structure strategy for service businesses 
I do not, unless you're a social media manager. Um, I do train social media managers. I have a membership that is launching on Thursday. Um, but if you are in another service, I do not have the, I, I don't consider my expert, myself an expert in the other industry. So I would definitely find someone who is within your industry to help you out with the, the pricing and the strategy for, for that. Does it make sense to get into social media while if while remaining anonymous since it seems like a lot of it has to do with internet influencer personality and relatability? Um, I think it's fine. You can be anonymous and create a really strong brand. Um, there's some brands, I can't think of them off of the top of my head, but they're like, um, they sell products and books. And as long as you create adding a lot of valuable content, you can still be really successful without ever showing your face. Um, if you want to, you can have other people represent your brand or work with influencers. So you're not the face of the brand, but you can make other people the face of your brand, if that makes sense. What is your perspective on promoted ads? Do you use them? I love ads and I really want to get into, I know you were asking about um, YouTube earlier. I really want to get into YouTube ads because they are so powerful. Um, I love ads. I think that you need a really strong organic, organic strategy on social media before putting money into ads because um, putting money into ads is really just going to, it's like gas on fire. It's just going to accelerate the fire. If you don't already have the fire, then you're just going to waste your money. Um, because a lot of ads, <laughs> when it comes to it, running ads, it's it's testing to see what works and what doesn't work. Um, so two things that you need if you want to run ads, you need money, budget to test. Um, so you have to be willing to throw away or not even throw away, but to test with, you know, thousands of dollars to see what you can get. And you need data. So if you don't have at least a thousand people on your email list. You are going to, it's the Facebook platform is going to be trying to find people that are going to be relevant to your offer. So if you don't have a clear idea of who that is, then they're going to be going through their millions of people on their algorithm to try to figure out who it is. And it ta that takes time. So um, I love ads. I know that they can really accelerate people's businesses, but you want to make sure that you have a strong organic strategy first, or you have the money to really play around with it and test. Um, I don't have too much information on YouTube ads right now, but it's something that I want to learn going into um, 2021, because I know with YouTube ads, the people on that are watching YouTube have a higher intent to buy because they're on there looking for a specific thing. So if they're looking for like how to make eggs and you sell a egg boiler, then they're more likely to buy it, right? Whereas with Facebook or Instagram, those people are just kind of like browsing through, swiping through. They may or may not have an intent to buy will ad or sponsored negatively affect content views? Nope. Does it negatively affect content views? And I think that the best way to, I don't know if you're an influencer um, or if you're just talking about promoting uh, ads, but I think the best way to combat that is just being like transparent with your audience. Like, hey guys, I am working with this brand. They're amazing. Um, I truly, I only promote things that I truly love and this is how I use it. This is the results that it's gotten for me. And if you're authentic and um, creating authentic content on a regular basis, it won't really matter. Now, if you're always pushing sponsored content and ads, then that can definitely negatively affect you. Okie doke. So um, does anyone have any other questions? I know that we are a little bit over. I did want to share some ways that you can contact me if you're interested in connecting with me. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, leave them below. But if you're interested in creating a social media strategy with me one on one or just learning more about what I do or connecting with me, you can follow me on Instagram. Facebook or LinkedIn. Um, my Instagram and Facebook is the same. Um, Tyler Danae. Trove Branding is our business page. So you can learn lots of social media tips and tricks 
over there. Definitely connect with me on LinkedIn at Tyler D. Jackson. And you can always shoot me an email if you have any questions about anything in particular. It has been a blast connecting with you guys. Hopefully you learned a lot. Um, yay, I'm so awesome. I'm so, I'm so happy that you enjoyed it. And hopefully you got some gems from this. Hopefully you can take the time out to do your homework. Uh, make sure that you're connecting the creating those pillars of content, um, clear on what your customers' um, pain points are, and look into some schedulers so you can make sure that you're being consistent into 2021. If you have any additional questions, connect with me on Instagram, and I would love to get those answered for you. Bye!